guys, welcome back to another Kerwin's Game Store unboxing video. Uh, today we have Throne of Eldraine. Just so everyone knows, keep in mind, the pre-releases start uh, tomorrow, actually. Uh, Friday on September 27th. Uh, the set will release next week, starting on the following Friday. So, Alright. Let's dig into the goods here. All these packs are pretty cool. You have uh, Rowan Kenrith on the packs. You know, some of the other cards. So, hopefully we get something good. Garuk is back. Um, that's probably the coolest thing, personally, I think about the set. Uh, the theme overall is great. Uh, we have, you know, some, some fairy tales mixed in, a bunch of knights. Uh, but overall, pretty excited the big guy's back. So, let's get to it. All right. Hopefully we get some goods. Um... Oko looks pretty cool. Food tokens? What's up with that? Alright. So, for our first rare, um, we have Castle Lockthwain. Uh, this is the black castle that enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a swamp. Uh, it lets you draw a card, and then you lose life equal to the number of cards in your hand. Put that there. Nothing super notable in the rest of the pack. All right, um, and these packs are packaged a little bit backwards. If you notice, it goes the token, the land, um, foil, then the rares. Package like uh, other master sets, other sets that are printed uh, in Japan, things like that. All right, so for the rare, uh, the rare we have is uh, which is vengeance. Creatures of uh, creatures of the creature type of your choice get minus three, minus three until end of turn. Uh, I think this card's pretty solid. It works well, especially with the idea of the Knights deck floating around, things like that, any sort of tribal type decks. Probably a pretty solid commander staple. Um, you know, especially if you have someone in your playgroup that is playing tribal decks, things like Elves. Ooh, we got a good one. Uh, take a second to talk about this card. Mystic Sanctuary. Um, the fact that you can fetch this land in uh, eternal formats, like Modern, Legacy, um, you can get it in Commander, things like that. This card is super, super, super good. Um, so what it says is, it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more islands. And then when it, when it enters the battlefield, um, you can put an instant or sorcery from the graveyard on top of your library. Pretty solid, pretty good. Does a lot of work. Um, I think... This cycle of lands is pretty solid. It it kind of the fact that you know that is it's fetchable, um, it's popper playable, which is big for some popper players. Things like that. Ooh, that's cool. So now we have uh, on an adventure. So adventure tokens. So one of the questions floating around, especially here at Kerwin's, was you know are we gonna have two separate exile piles? Like how is this gonna work? Um, the fact that they made a token for this is pretty cool so you can kind of differentiate what's going on um, we'll take a quick look through the pack and then we'll talk about the rare all right so Vantress Gargoyle um, recently there's been a lot of talk about this card you know how to make it broken how to make it really good really playable um, I think it's sweet it's a two mana five four that flies it's just a matter of where does it fit in how does it slot um, so we'll see what the future holds for this card. All right, some new knight tokens. Okay. Nothing super, super crazy. Um, fun fact, there are, uh, gingerbread themed cards in this set, which is real cool. All right, so for our rare in this pack, we have uh, Folio of Fancies. Players have no max hand size. For a colorless and a blue, it's an artifact. You can pay XX and tap it, and each player will draw X cards. Um, if you pay two and a blue and tap it, each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into their graveyard. Um, card looks pretty cool. Definitely can be played in like a... Um, like a group hug type deck, maybe in Commander. You could probably play in a deck like uh, Phoenix and then just, you know, try and do the mill thing and add to that from there. Um, the fact that 
you have no max hand size. This is pretty cool. Um, you know, draw a lot of draw decks, things like that. So, oh wow, that's cool. New uh, new arena advertisement. Oh yeah, this card is sweet. Um, so for our rare, we have the Feasting Troll King. Um, trolls, pretty cool, pretty cool thing all around in terms of what they are and what they do to theme if you're a fan of um, this type of fairy tales and like, you know, creatures and things like that. Uh, it has Vigilance and Trample. It is a 7-6. So it's pretty large, but it's also mana cost-wise very hard to cast. Um, but if you sack three foods, you can return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. And you can only do it during your turn. So it kind of slows it down a little bit, but the fact that you can sack three foods and bring it back. Uh, so far, I think people possibly are underestimating the food tokens and how they'll play out in standard and things like that. Um, the fact that you can sack food token to gain you life, you can sack it to a card like this and bring it back. Uh, it'll have more implications than what they look like they might have. All right, let's get through here. Ooh, a full of Lucky Clover. That's cool. All right. Circle of Loyalty. This card. This is one of one of the legendary artifacts out of the set. Um, it's six mana. It's four and two white. But it costs one less for each knight you control. Uh, this is a mythic. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And then you can, whenever you cast a legendary spell, you make a two-two. You can pay three and a white and tap it to create a 2-2 two -two with Vigilance. Um, and the other the other token that comes on is also has Vigilance. This card, the fact alone that it costs less for each um, each knight you control, so, you know, the creatures of that type, makes it fairly powerful, and you could probably play it fairly quickly. Um, I don't know where this card sits so far, but it's definitely an awesome mythic to get. Human Rogues, that's cool. Oh, nice. Stone Coil Serpent is the rare. Um, so the Stone, Co the Stone Coil Serpent, um, it costs X. It has Reach Trample, protection from multicolor, uh, and it'll enter the battlefield with X-1-1 counters on it. Uh, typically, cards like this in the past, anything artifact, creature things that would cost X, look at cards like Walking Ballista. Um, these play some sort of role depending on what the standard format is or maybe it'll have an inter uh, eternal implications in a format like modern. The, the, the cool thing is that it has reach and trample and pro multicolor. That's a lot of text, especially for a card that costs X. Um, might be good somewhere in like a ramp deck, possibly the mono green deck that might be played in standard. So this card definitely will see play somewhere. Um, and then... Again, much like the, the basic land cycle, uh, the Witch's Cottage. This is probably the second best uh, of the lands at the in the common cycle. Um, it's a swamp, so you can fetch it out with cards like Bloodstain Mire, Verdant Catacombs, uh, Marsh Flats. So what happens is it enters the battlefield unless you control three or more swamps. Uh, it enters tapped, sorry. Uh, when the cottage enters the battlefield, you may put target creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library. Seems real good. Um, it's a utility land, so it'll allow you to get things back. Maybe it allows you to get a creature back that can help you win the game. All right. Let's see. Ooh, dwarf tokens. I know uh, I have a couple friends I could probably hand these out to, myself included. Ooh, that is cool. All right. Um, oh, wow. Two packs with, with cool art, with awesome art. Or one pack, two cards, awesome art. Um, so Shepherd of the Flock is a two mana, three one human peasant. Um, you can adventure it, which is called Usher to Safety for one white, and you can return a permanent you control to its owner's hand. Uh, the other card is Fay of Wishes. 
Uh, Fate of Wishes is a rare. It's a 2 mana 1 4 that has flying. You may pay a blue and a colorless. Discard two cards, return it to its owner's hand. The other thing you can do is adventure it. You may choose a non-creature spell you own from outside the game. So your sideboard, basically. Um, and then you can reveal it and put it into your hand. And that's for three and a blue. Let's get a solid look at these. These are real, real cool. Really like what uh, Wizards did here with these. They they kind of give you a reason to want to play different cards. Uh, personally, I don't like foils when I'm playing and things of that nature. But when there's non-foil alternate card, altered art cards like that, I could get behind it. Ooh. I'll tell you what. This box has some hits. Um, so in this box... Uh, you know, so far, it looks really solid. Two Mythics. We've got a Foil Mythic, which is uh, Brazen Borrower. Um, for our rare, we got another Fae of Wishes, and we just talked about it. So we'll skip that one. Brazen Borrower. Uh, there's been some terms going around about this card. Uh, possibly new Vendillion click, things like that. It is a 3-mana three 3-1 three with Flying and Flash. Uh, it can only block creatures with Flying, though. It has the adventure, uh, adventure name of Petty Thief. It's an instant. And what Petty Thief does is it says return target non-land permanent uh, and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So this card definitely has has some complications. Um, you know, I know you don't want to be bouncing Karn and Modern if you're playing Control, but maybe. I don't know. We'll see where that card ends up. Um, but as a 3-1 with flying, always a good card. Ooh, Queen of Ice is a foil. All right. We got Oko. Um, so Oko, Oko is cool. He is one of the new planeswalkers of the set. Um, from my understanding, he is a shapeshifter. Um, so he can do a bunch of different things uh, in terms of his story and things like that. Um, you plus two, create a food token. Uh, like I said earlier, food tokens have probably more of an impact on the set than right now that's uh, perceived. You can plus one. Target artifact or creature loses all abilities and becomes a green elk creature with base power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. Uh, minus five. You can exchange control of target artifact or creature. Uh, you control and target creature and opponent controls with power three or less. The best part about this card is that uh, he is a three mana planeswalker with four loyalty. Uh, time and time again, we've seen three mana planeswalkers uh, get printed. They keep getting printed, and they keep doing a lot of very powerful things. Um, look at Teferi, for example. Uh, Teferi Time Raveler. Three mana basically just wins the game. So we'll see where Oko goes with this. Uh, for our rare here, we opened another Mythic. We have a Brazen Borrower. So we got a foil and a non-foil Brazen Borrower. This box is pretty good. All right. Um, got a ton of packs left, so. Let's see here. Ooh, Fabled Passage. Okay. So, Fabled Passage is a card that got spoiled very late in terms of the typical spoilers. Most players thought that three color decks might not be a thing, they might not be possible. Uh, Fable Passage makes it possible. It's a better version, a way better version of Evolving Wilds. Uh, you can sacrifice it, search your library for a basic, and put it onto the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. Then, if you control four or more lands, untap it. So it's definitely a solid card. It helps thin your deck. It's very good in the, uh, the later game when you have four or more lands. So It also helps you fix in the early game, maybe on turn one, things like that. Okay, foil weapon, weapons rack. Fires of Invention is our rare. Uh, Fires of Invention is an odd card. I know this has been talked about. Um, at four mana, it kind of competes with cards like Experimental Frenzy. Um, you can cast spells only during your turn, and you can cast no more than two spells. You may cast spells with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control without paying their cost. So the card itself has a drawback, right? You can play two things. You can only do it on your turn. But depending on your lands, you do it for free. 
Um, seems like a fun card to play around with. Faceboro Elders are rare. Ooh, Flaxen Intruder. So we have an Ultra Art Flaxen Intruder. Um, this card is cool if you're a uh, big fan of like Goldilocks, things like that. Um, this is basically what it is, or what it looks like. Um, it is a one mana, one two, uh, with adventure. The adventure is called Welcome Home. It's five and two green, and you create three two two bears. Uh, definitely, definitely sounds like Goldilocks and the three bears. Uh, and then its normal ability, if you play it as a creature, when it enters the battlefield, uh, or sorry, whenever Flaxen Intruder deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it. When you do, destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. Card is pretty cool. The art is awesome. This was actually one of the first uh, alternate art cards that got spoiled. Um, and then our rare, the face, uh, the Fayboro Elder. It is a colorless, a green, and a white. It has vigilance. It is a tree folk druid. Um, it gets plus one plus one for each color among permanents you control. Uh, you can tap for each color among permanents you control. You can add one mana of that color. Probably a pretty good uh, commander card. Five color decks seems real solid. Um, mana fixer. So okay. Ooh, Castle Ardenvale. Deafening silence. So Castle Ardenvale. Um, this is a land where if anyone played standard during last rotation, uh, decks like mono white you had Legion's Landing. Now you have this, so it's kind of like Legion's Landing almost didn't go away. Um, and there's a battlefield tap unless you control the planes, and you can tap it for white. You pay two colorless and two white mana um, and create a 1 1 human. The only difference is between this and Legion's Landing, the human doesn't have lifelink. Murderous Rider. Murderous Rider is definitely one of the bigger standouts of the set overall. Um, it is a 3 mana 2 3 lifelinker. Uh, when it dies, you put it on the uh, bottom of the owner's library. And then the probably the biggest implication of the card is the adventure that it has called Swift End. It is also 3 mana, it's colorless and 2 black. You can destroy a target creature or a planeswalker, and you lose two life. So, obviously, a strictly worse uh, hero's downfall, just because of the loss of life. But the card itself will play a very, very large role. The fact that it can destroy planeswalkers um, can probably kill anything in standard. Ooh, shine chaser, lock mirror serpent. So. Lockmere Serpent is a very odd card. Um, it's a 6 mana 7-7 seven, seven, blue-black. Uh, I remember at first when the card first dropped and got spoiled. Um, there was a lot of back and forth about whether or not it was good, whether or not it was the finisher control decks needed, things like that for standard. Uh, it has Flash, which is real big. It, does a, it has a ton of different text, does a ton of different abilities. Um, you can pay a blue and sack an island. Uh, it cannot be blocked this turn. You can pay a black and sacrifice a swamp. You gain one life and you draw a card. Or you can play, pay a blue and a black. Exile five target cards from an opponent's graveyard. And return it uh, from your graveyard to your hand. And you can activate this ability only time you can cast a sorcery. Um, card itself is real cool. I wonder if if the card picks up in popularity. Um, you know, Graph Digger's Cage is in standard. So, my hope is at one mana, if graveyard decks become super popular, I can just play a draft digger's cage and never have to worry. Uh, right, let's see. When did the Steadfast Queen? All right. So, when did the Steadfast Queen is triple white. Uh, it's a legendary human noble. It uh, has vigilance. It's a 3 3, and it says whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain one life. Uh, I don't know with the loss of um, Banalish Marshall in standard. Uh, maybe that fills fills a role there. Maybe it doesn't. 
Um, the fact that it's a three white three three and it gains you life whenever uh, white creatures you control, and there's a lot of pretty solid white creatures currently. All right. Old Sworn Knight. Old Sworn Knight is a three mana zero zero. It enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters for a colorless and two black. Uh, it attacks each combat if able. If damage will be dealt to Old Sworn Knight, uh, if while it has a plus one plus one counter on it, prevent that damage and remove the plus one plus one counter from it. So potentially just a long term blocker. If you're playing if there's a way to put counters on creatures and things like that. Embercleave, another one of the legendary artifacts. Well, this would be a really good draft pack. Mystic Sanctuary, a Witch's Courage. Wow. Uh, so Embercleave is six mana, four colorless, and two red. It has flash. It is a legendary artifact equipment. Uh, this spell costs one less for each attacking creature you control. When it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Equip creature has gets plus one plus one has double strike and trample uh the normal equip cost is three so all of these uh of this cycle are mythics um the fact that hey if i have a go wide strategy i attack with a bunch of smaller guys tokens things like that and i can just play it for roughly free arnville paladin okay mirror maid All right, so our rare is Mirror Maid. Uh, it is a three mana, colorless, and two blue. It is an enchantment. When you may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. All right, not a bad card. Um, it's an enchantment, probably plays a role somewhere in my guest commander. Um, Cards like that are usually pretty good, especially depending on your strategy when you have two of the same thing on board. Um, ooh, Castle Garen Bridge. So Castle Garen Bridges are rare. I don't know what to make of this card exactly. Um, I've seen a lot of things like it slides into Primeval Titan decks in Modern, things of that nature. Uh, it enters tapped unless you control a forest. It taps for a forest. And then you can pay for tap it and add six green to your mana pool. You can use the green only to cast creature spells and to activate abilities of creatures. Card seems real solid. Uh, just needs to find a home and implications. Don't know how good it is possibly in the standard mono green deck. Um, might be good with the stone coil serpent. So, giant opportunity. Love struck beast. So love struck beast is a three mana five five uh two colorless and a green it is a beast noble when you adventure it for a sorcery for one green you can create a one one human token love struck beast cannot attack unless you control one one creature uh so the fact alone that you have to have a one one a three mana five five is always good but there's no guarantee that you will always have the one one so if you can't, you basically just have a glorified blocker. Oh, here it is. Possibly the most talked about card in the set. Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time is a two mana green and a colorless instant card. If this spell is the first spell you've cast this game, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land uh, from among them, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, the card itself, it it's like an Ancient Surings, basically, for free. Um, it's a better, uh, it's just a good card. You play it for free. You can do it at your opponent's end step if they go first. Um, the fact alone that it's, it's free on the first time. Uh, each subsequent time you have to pay the two mana, but even at two mana to look at the top five, you know, find a find a win condition, find another creature. Um, maybe you need a land to help you get there. So card's gonna play a vital role in a lot of places. 
Wishclaw Talisman. Wishclaw Talisman is an artifact. It's a colorless and a black. Uh, it enters the battlefield with three wish counters on it. You can pay one, tap it. Remove a wish counter from Wishclaw Talisman. Search your library for a card. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. An opponent gains control of Wishclaw Talisman. Activate this ability only during your turn. So it says, hey, um, I'm going to remove a counter. Find a, find my thing, my win condition or my combo piece. Uh, an opponent can get it, but I've probably already won the game. Okay, Black Lance Paragon. So Black Lance Paragon is a 2-mana 3-1. It's a colorless and a black. It's a human knight with flash. And when Black Lance Paragon... Enters the battlefield. A target knight gains death touch and lifelink until end of turn. Um, definitely more of like a utility type of knight. Uh, most of the knight lists that have kind of been floating around are black and white. Uh, if some splash the red, it's four sideboard pieces and things like that so far from what I've seen. So that might be a solid sideboard card. Alright. Happily Ever After. Happily Ever After is a three mana enchantment. Two colorless and a white. Uh, it says, when it enters the battlefield, each player gains five life and draws a card. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are five colors among permanents you control, uh, there are six or more card types among permanents uh, you control also, and or cards in your graveyard, and your life total is greater than or equal to your starting life total, you win the game. A lot of text. A lot of text on a card. Um, definitely has some. It's kind of like a fun card, I think, is what I want to say. Uh, maybe it's a card you throw in a deck where you're playing. You're playing five colors. You're playing all sorts of different permanents. Um, you know, and you're just trying to be. Hey, this is my win condition. It's kind of if it works, it works. Ooh, Piper of the Swarm. This is a solid, solid, solid uh, commander card. So, Piper of the Swarm is a 2-mana colorless and black 1-3 uh, human warlock. It says, rats you control have menace. Pay a colorless and a black to tap it. Create a 1-1 one, one black rat. Um, pay 2 colorless, 2 black, tap it. Sack 3 rats, gain control of target creature. Uh, this card... Definitely fits the commander, uh, the commander staple type thing, um, especially for the rat stack. Uh, Relentless rats, that's a huge thing. Buy them now, uh, KerwinsGameStore.com. And you know you have other cards that fit the fit the whole rack, rat rat uh, rat archetype. Um, the fact that you can sack three and steal something from another player, you can make tokens with it, and it's only two mana. Um, the sad part is it's not a legendary, so it can't be your commander. Ooh. All right, Torben, Thane of Redfell. Uh, this card has been much talked about around the store. Uh, it is a colorless and three red, so it's a four mana, two four. It is a dwarf noble. If a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent in opponent controls, it deals that much plus two instead. Uh, your shock steal four to creatures. Um, any of your other burn spells are plus two. Things like that. It, The card itself, it's just insane. It's like, hey, I'm going to give everything I have uh, plus two. I'm going to swing. My one ones are dealing three. Um, this card... You know, it competes with the four slot, the four slot and uh, mono red and standard with frenzy, depending on the style of deck you build. But that card definitely will play a role at some point in the standard format. Ooh, foil fires of invention, fervent champion, cool. Um, so fervent champion is a human knight. It is a one one. Has first strike haste. When it attacks another target knight, target knight you control. Gets plus one, plus zero until the end of turn. Uh, equip abilities, you activate that target fervent champion cost three less. So it's a solid one mana, um, one mana haster. 
The fact that it has first strike is real good because it can beat through a lot of smaller creatures. Um, if you have two of them, they can buff each other, which is nice because technically it's another creature uh, or another knight. Whoa. All right, that's cool. There's mouse tokens. Uh, Escape to the Wilds. So Escape to the Wilds is uh, three colorless, a red, and a green. And so sorcery. You exile the top five cards of your library. You may play cards exiled this way until the end of turn. You may also play an additional land. Um, seems like the type of card where if you're playing a super, super heavy ramp style of deck, um, you're just like, hey, I have a ton of mana. I'm going to basically play this for free, play my extra land, and then I'm just going to play a bunch of stuff that I exiled away. Sundering Stroke. Oh, that's cool. Um... So Sundering Stroke is 7 mana. Uh, this card is... I don't know where it plays. It might, be, it might cost too much right now. Maybe in the future it might be real good. Um, deal 7 damage divided as you choose among 1, 2, or 3 targets. If at least 7 red mana was spent to cast the spell, instead it deals 7 damage to each of those permanents and or players. Uh, typically, you know, in standard we're losing Banefire for... The red decks, which at one point in time was a sideboard card. Um, typically, you wouldn't play it until you had six or seven anyways. So, this might just fit the role. Um, the only difference between the two is that damage couldn't be prevented. But the fact that you can choose multiple targets for that could be could be a player. Alright, we're down the last few packs here. Giant Killer. Giant Killer is a cool card. Um, I really like this card art. You know, Jack and the Beanstalk looking. Uh, the Giants falling down. Uh, Giant Killer is one white. It's a human peasant. It's a one-two. You can pay one and a colorless, tap it to tap target creature. Or you can pay two and a colorless to chop down. Uh, destroy target creature with power four or greater. All right. Ooh, Firstborn Knight. Wildborn Preserver. So Wildborn Preserver is a 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two, uh, Elf Archer. It's a colorless and a green. It has Flash and Reach. And whenever another non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X. When you do, put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on Wildborn Preserver. Uh, possibly has a slot in green decks, mid-range decks, things like that. Um... Maybe it's he's playing Eternal Formats. Uh, has Flash Reach, which is pretty big. And for a 2-2 that has a fair amount of text, uh, in the later game when you have extra mana and you have nothing to do, you can buff it. If you play something that uh, a non-human, which is pretty nice, you just make keep making it bigger. Ooh. Oh, this pack is cool. Okay. Um, so we have... An Altered Art Murderous Rider. Uh, we talked about this card before. Uh, it's the card, the 2-3 with lifelink. And when it dies, you put it at the bottom of your library. Uh, it also destroys creatures and planes walkers, and you lose two life. But look at that. That is sweet. It's got some real cool, like, you know, black and white sketch art uh, is what it pretty much looks like. Um, I like the way the black and white lines up on the borders, too, which is pretty sweet. Uh, I think that overall, um, Wizards of the Coast did a really, really good job with those cards in particular. They look awesome. Um, the theme is great. So, it's just a matter of hopefully the gameplay is just as good, if not better. Okay, that's cool. A foil uh, Oak Ham Ranger. Ah, Clackbridge Troll, the other troll. So, Clackbridge Troll is... Uh, a 5 mana, 80. 3 colorless and 2 black. It has trample and haste. When Clack Bridge Troll enters the battlefield, a target opponent creates 301 white goat creature tokens. At the beginning of combat in your turn, uh, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If a player does tap Clack Bridge Troll, you gain 3 life and you draw a card. So, if, you know, you play this card, you find a way to get rid of those tokens, especially in a one on one match. Um, this card could definitely do some damage, especially because it has Trample and Haste. 
I think it's, you know, it's real cool. It's definitely worth uh, trying out, seeing if it fits in a fun deck or if it fits in an actual, um, you know, competitive meta deck maybe. But we'll see what happens. Um, but overall, that was the whole box for Throne of Eldraine. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.